The National Historical Commission of the Philippines, or the NHCP, was created in 1972 initially as the National Historical Institute to integrate the diverse functions of various historical agencies. NHCP now, by virtue of RA10086, is responsible for the conservation and preservation of the country's historical legacies. It is an arm in the culture and development agenda of the government and visions of Filipino society with citizens informed of their history, who love their country and are proud of their cultural heritage. Its mission is the promotion of Philippine history and cultural heritage through research, dissemination, conservation, sites management, and heraldy works. It aims to inculcate awareness and appreciation of the noble deeds and ideals of our heroes and other illustrious Filipinos to instill pride in the Filipino race and to rekindle the Filipino spirit through the lessons of history. Kalantiao Shrine The Kalantiao Shrine was located at Batan. It was discovered by Dato Raha Bindahara. It was the seat of Raha Bindahara, Kalantiao promulgator of famous code of Kalantiao. The Kalantiao Shrine Built on 1957, Kalantiao Shrine was declared on February 11, 1957. The Kalantiao Shrine is one of the recognized tourist spots of NHCP built by the Philippine Historical Cultural Society in 1957. It is located at Batan. It was once the seat of Raja Bendahara Kalantiao, promulgator of the famous Code of Kalantiao. Many tourists visit Kalintiao Shrine because it exhibits a pictorial history from the pre-Hispanic period to the contemporary era. It is also built in honor of Raja Bendahara Kalintiao. A display of the original manuscript of the code can also be found in this museum. So, take a look at Batan Trip and schedule your visit to Kalintiao Shrine and learn about what else to see and do during your holiday. The Don Lucindo Maika Historical Landmark and the Macau Galing. The oldest printing press here in Iloilo. So, let's take a look inside. The Makina of Galingan printer and book binder are very old. And we're a new printing institution in Western Visayas. It started way back in 1913. Among Filipino intelligence, Don Lucindo Maika was one. He was a self-starter. He started out as a poor resident of Baluarte, and he put up a printing press, but not before they gathered. He spent how knew how to write. And the day he started the magazine, full of vernacular stories, Ilongo stories, and they have a Monica Makina Ogalingon stories. That's a 100 seconds. In Iloilo, skip the usual unpredictable routes to their malls and instead to get yourself some local culture by visiting the Rosendo Meca Historical Landmark in Mall. Rosendo Meca was born in this area of Molo in Iloilo City on March 1, 1873, one of the first Iligaynon publishers and publishers, journalists, educators, leader of the workers and prominent philanthropist in the province of Iloilo. Features as dean of the Visayan journalist. He died on February 24, 1956. Opened as a museum in 1998, the 19th century wooden residence also houses early 20th century printing machinery. The fact is, this equipment as part of the oldest printing press in Iloilo, the Makina Ogalingon Press. Started in May 1, 1913 by Rosendo Mexica, original printing machines such as the Minerva letterpress, proof press, 
Iger and Qatar are evidently still functional in this 21 first century. These machines were built to last. Dahil gay noon newspapers kadapig sang banwa was thought to be printed right at maginawgaling. No one really knows for sure, but the evidence that strengthens this theory are manuscripts dating from 1906 found at the library. A manuscript is a script assigned to an object, in this case, newspapers. In order to print the chronicles, manuscripts are needed. Aside from the treasures that the archives house, the residence itself holds equally fascinating objects, such as a real early Marka Damang sewing machine, a 1954 telephone directory for the few Ilongos who already had phones then, and when telephones numbers were only three or four digits appears, some wooden wash basins, one a meter wide, that were carved out of whole tree trunks. A three burner kerosene stove and a hat and cane trap for the gentleman. Luca in Cantana. So this is the photo of Luca in Cantana. It was taken way back on 1910. So the summer mansion of the Lopez clan, located atop a hill and known as Luca in Cantana or Enchanted Rock is one of the Gemara's most famous sites in 1910. The house was dedicated to Duna Presentacion of Elena Lopez. So this is the modern photo taken on Roca Encantada. Roca Encantada is the kind of rest house by the sea that many of us are dreaming to have. The idea that it's a three-floor house that's standing on a large rock at the corner of the beach would mean a lot of wonderful things. This unobstructed building can greatly absorb the fresh cool breeze from the sea. Its height gives it an awesome view of the horizon. Bushy green islets that are cool to the eyes adds more charm in its view. It's also one of the first buildings in Gimaras that will see an early sunrise and the last one to see the sunset. So, Roca Encantada declared a heritage house by the National Historical Institution on August 14, 2002. So, it may appear to be a typical rest house but Roca Encantada was declared a heritage house by the National Historical Institution on August 14, 2002. The Lopez clan had this built in 1910 in honor of the Doña Presentacion of Pelina Lopez. It may look modern now after its renovation, but this ancestral house looked entirely different when it was first built. This rest house is located in the Valas, Benavesta, Guimaras, where the Spanish era, the Valas Church can also be found. Roca Encantado, or also known as Enchanted Rock. One of the Gimara's famous landmarks is the summer house of the Lopez clan built at Tapa Hill. Roca Encantada is located in Suena Vesta town, Gimara. From Parola, Loilo City is a 15-minute ride to MacArthur's Wharf. And from there, one can arrange transportation through the Tourist Assistance Center in the Wharf. From MacArthur's Wharf, it is another 45-minute ride to Roca Encantada. Also, there are many hotels nearby so you don't have to worry a place to stay in. Roca Encantada is a three-floor house that's standing on a large rock at the corner of the beach. This unobstructed building can greatly absorb the fresh cool breeze from the sea. Its height gives it an awesome view of the horizon. Bushy green islets that are cool to the eyes add more charm in its view. It's also one of the first buildings in Gamaran that will see an early sunrise and the last one to see the sunset. The stairs not only serve as entryway to the house, but a perfect backdrop for countless selfies and photo ops. But it's the grand balcony of the heritage house that offers the most photogenic views. The grand balconies of Broca and Cantada offers a picturesque view of the front and to illustrate with La Isla de Siete Picados, also known as the Isles of Seven Seas, not far from its coast. Welcome.
the most luxurious rest houses have swimming pools, this one has the sea right behind it. The sand's brownish color can give the wrong impression that the water is dirty, but it's definitely clean and suitable for swimming. You will also appreciate the house design and architecture more from this angle coming with nature. Entrance fee to Roca Encantada is 50 pesos per head, and one can access the ground and the outside of the house since the inside is a limit to visit. Nonetheless, it's always a visit that is worth all the selfies, groofies, and photo ops. And if there's one word that describes the experience, it's enchanting. General Juan Araneta. So this is the photo of General Juan Araneta Museum. So, Balay Nitan Juan, the General Araneta Residence and Museum is a national historic site. Tan Juan or General Juan Anaplito Araneta was a rebel who resisted the Spaniards during their occupation of the Gross Island. The Pagonhons have called General Araneta's residence Balainitan Juan since the early 20th century. The General bought the house from his niece in 1906 and remained there until his death in 1924. The home was later donated to the city of Bang, who converted it into a museum. The General Juan Araneta Residence and Landmark Museum was established. So this is the photo inside the museum. So the museum first opened its doors in 1996. It houses mementos from well-known Bagunhons and the Araneta family. It also has the Kabugi of Bago exhibit or Life in Bago. It also includes an exhibit on rice and sugar, the city's principal agricultural crops. The golden exhibit was added in 2016 to commemorate Bago's 50th anniversary as a city. So this is the exhibit of Juan Araneta Museum. So the museum contains memorabilia of famous Bagonhons and the Araneta family. It also exhibits the Kabuhi sa Bago or Lahit Bago, the Kalamay and Humay, the primary crops of the city. General Juan Araneta Museum, locally known as Balay ni Juan. Among the prominent men in the history of the Negros Island in the Philippines, General Juan Araneta is one of the most celebrated historical figures. Historical marker installed by National Historical Institute on the house of General Juan Araneta, locally known as Tan Juan. A house built in the 1800s, a typical Balay Bato whose architectural style was prevalent in the Philippines during the Spanish era. It has become a usual host for visiting tourists who want to know about the history, arts, and culture of the Bagun. The museum contains memorabilia of famous Baganon and the Araneta factory. It also exhibits the Kapuhi sa Bago, or Life in Bago. Concave there, Balay ni Tan Juan was built in the 19th century. Its most unusual feature is the concave stairs, leading to four big rooms in the ground floor. Household gadgets and office equipment very common during the time of General Araneta. Negrin elite love to accompany their family events with entertainment and these musical instruments are proof that General Juan Araneta also loved the people. Prayer books, rosaries, crucifix, images, and wooden statues contain bowls, different kinds of plants, old baul, and many other household items can be found in General Araneta's house. Workers are setting the
the construction of the church and convent of Santo Niño was started under Reverend Andres Ordanita and other Augustinian fathers in 1565, making it the first established in the country. On November 1, 1565, both the church and the convent were burned down. They were rebuilt only to be destroyed by another fire in March 1628. It was again reconstructed under historian Reverend Juan de Medina's administration in 1628-1629. The present massive church was designed and constructed during the prior shape of Reverend Catholic Church is located in Basilica Minor del Santo Domingo, the Cebu Pilgrim Center. The country's oldest Catholic icon, the Santo Domingo, is known for his miracles and people's devotions that transcends religions. This church is beautiful and very old. Many people go there because they admire the old-fashioned church. The people there are friendly and generous. Cebu Provincial Capital Cebu Provincial Capital, the capital as it is commonly called, is the set of the provincial government of Cebu, Philippines. The capital was first established right in front of Plaza Independencia or Independence Park at Cebu Sport Area under the management of the Filipino revolutionaries in 1898 and by the American Army in 1899. This present building sits at the north end of Usminia Boulevard. The capital was designed by Juan Arellano, a famous Filipino architect, in December 1936. That inauguration was led by Manuel L. Quezon in June 14, 1938. The old capital building is a wealth of both architectural design and history. It renovated several times but has never been replaced nor relocated. It stands prominently in the heart of Cebu City where it acts like a guard to all of its residents. This place is not really a tourist destination but a simple landmark in the city. Visitors to the city, especially first-timer, we can go to this place just to have a souvenir photo taken in front of it. Nothing much to see here. It's just an ordinary building for some local government offices. And also, it is an impressive and beautiful building. The main feature being U-shaped concave pediment cap with a capula. From ground level, if you look up, we'll read an inscription. The authority of the government emanates from the people. And in the gardens at the front of the capital, you can also see the statue. And with coming Christmas, you can also see the lights and the Christmas tree outside in the building. So what are you waiting for? Book your ticket now to visit the beautiful and impressive building of Cebu Provincial Capital in Cebu City. Mercado Mansion The Mercado Mansion is a heritage house located in Carcar, Cebu, Philippines. It is a two-story bahay na bato painted with the turning blue owned by the Mercado clan along Cebu South Road. It was declared a heritage house by the National Historical Commission of the Philippines in 2009. The Mercado Mansion is a heritage house. The second floor is very ornately designed with the panels of wood embossed with garbings, pilasters, decorative wooden brackets, a transom with fancy craving in the wood and windows, panels made up of coffee shell and lovers. The windows are with the metal awnings painted in the medley of blue and white stripes. Beneath the window, 
cells or little windows or ventanillas with its sliding mode wooden panels to regulate light and air. And wrought iron grills added ornamentation and security. The house is covered by galvanized iron roof. Its aves are designed with air events in the form of calados or tracerest in richly fanciful style. Pedro Apostol Parish Church, commonly known as Lubuk Church, is a Roman Catholic church in the municipality of Lubuk, Bohol, Philippines, within the jurisdiction of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Tagbilaran. The parish was established in 1602 and the present Coral Stone Church was completed in 1734. In 1768, upon the expulsion of the Jesuits, the town was transferred to the Augustinian Recollects. The church is classified as a National Historical Landmark by the National Historical Commission of the Philippines and a National Cultural Treasure by the National Museum of the Philippines. It was severely damaged when a 7.2 magnitude earthquake struck Bohol and other parts of Central Visayas on October 15, 2013. An effort to faithfully restore the church began in 2017 and it was finally reopened on May 16, 2021. A coat of arms compound in the stone will near the entrance of the convent. The bell tower of the book is about 100 meters from the church. Attached to the building is a three story convent which study houses the Museo de Lobo on the third floor. This museum houses a few old statues of saints and some other antique religious artifacts. In Lobo, you can also admire a simple witness of Vespertani. Exactly next to the church is partly bridged across the river. Hopefully, the bridge will never be completed. As to do that, the church will have to be destroyed. The Lima Sawa Shrine is known for the first Mass in the Philippines, officiated on Easter Sunday of March 31, 1521, by Father Pedro de Valderrama under the fleet of Ferdinand Magellan. Lima Sawa is known to be the birthplace of the church in the Philippines. In 1994, President Fidel V. Ramos approved Republic Act No. 7822 declaring Lima Sawa as a tourist zone in 1994. Lima Sawa Island has become a tourist spot for both locals and foreigners because of its religious and historical importance and its natural attraction. The first mass shrine in Lima Sawa is one of the top tourist spots in the island because of its religious and historical importance. The mass was officiated by Spanish priest Father Pedro de Valderrama on Easter Sunday. From the Dock Resort, it was just less than a 10-minute ride going to the National Shrine of the First Mass. The park is well kept and clean. The main path leading to the building is flanked by gardens. Inside, Sam Galvez, the popular tour guide at the shrine, who will animatedly explain the brief history of Lima Sawa with his voice rises and falls as he dramatically narrated the events of that fateful day on the 31st of March. Supporting the tour guide's narration are a series of paintings in tableau of the place's history. Within the vicinity of the first mass shrine, atop a hill, is a replica of Magellan's cross that was planted by Magellan's men when they arrived at the island. In order to reach the Magellan's cross, a visitor needs to climb 450 steps to get to the top. The view from the hill makes the climb more worthwhile. The National Shrine of the First Mast can be reached via Habal Habal and Barangay Magallanes, island of Lima Sawa, Southern Leyte. Kapol Lighthouse is a lighthouse on Tito Oak Point in San Luis on the northern tip of Kapol Island, northern summer in the Philippines. The Kapol Lighthouse, which was intended to serve diesel during that time, 
was declared as a National Historical Landmark on September 29, 2013. The Kapo Lat House, one of the few surviving Lat Houses in the country, which was built in October 1893 under the supervision of the late Francisco Perez Munoz. It was the first lighted in December 1896, while the station was still partially completed. However, its construction was suspended a month before in November of some year at the onset of the Philippine Revolution. But on some year, the pavilions was finished during the American era. Capoletto's great contribution go beyond the Spanish and American times. It becomes witness of Japanese World War II, where a few meters farther down the stove from the main building, are three circular guns emplacements of the Japanese Imperial Navy. These big guns used to be mounted there and were intended to be used against the Americans. Kapul Lighthouse, also known as the Faro de Isla Kapul. The lighthouse was initially built by the Spaniards in 1896. It is located in the northern part of Samar. There is no high-end hotels in the island, but only lodgings, inns, and nearby beach resorts that offer basic housing options. Tourists can also contact the local government, specifically the Coast Guard assigned in the area, for arrangements to stay in the lighthouse. Pavilions are available nearby. Also, caretaker accommodate visiting tourists. The town surrounding the lighthouse is also worthy to tour around. You can get around the town by habal-habal or motorcycles taxis with its quiet abayas and fresh air. The place is also perfect for some soul searching and the view of the sunset or sunrise are perfect to see in this place. Come and visit to Kapoa Lighthouse to enjoy the historic place and to learn its past.